Hi, this is Dina for Split Coast Stampers. In this tutorial, I will show you how to make a faux wood frame using inks and cardstock, and I'll share a couple of shortcuts as well. I'm following the photo steps and instructions from a tutorial by Kim Teasdale, which you can find on our website. I'll start off here with a piece of mustard colored cardstock and three shades of brown ink. And these are hybrid inks, but other inks will work as well. The cardstock color will show through, so you can change that up if you want a different look. And I started with my lightest ink, and I'm just dragging the pad lightly down the cardstock, and then angling the pad slightly so I get some lines from the edge of the pad as well. And I'll repeat that same step with the other two ink pads, just building up a wood grain look by layering the inks. For the last layer of ink, I use this antique linen oxide ink, but you might try a white or light pigment ink if you have that. If you're just wanting a wood look for your background, this panel is actually ready for your project. To go ahead and make a frame, if you don't have a frame die, you can use two nesting dies centered together. I've got two nesting square dies and I'll tape them in place and run them through my die cutting machine. To make a really rustic frame, the next step is to cut the frame at each corner to create little miter joints. In the photo tutorial, she used a ruler and craft knife to do this, but I'm just eyeballing these cuts and doing them with my scissors. I switched two steps here and it doesn't matter. I went ahead and added the texture to my pieces before doing the edges. If you want to go ahead and edge them first with a sponge or a brush, that's fine. I like my wood grain stencil better than the embossing folder that I have, so I laid my pieces onto a silicone mat and laid the stencil over the top. I ran that through my die cutting machine and that gave me even more texture on these pieces, which you can see when I run my darkest ink pad over them one more time. Then I use that same ink to edge each piece with a blending brush. And when all the pieces were done, I lined them all up and used a 1 16th inch hole punch to punch them at both ends. And then I put a mini brad in each of those holes. I know we all have a stash of those, so here is a great way to move eight of them onto a card. I taped the frame together at the corners and I used my grid to help me line the pieces back up correctly. And then once I had the frame together, I used foam tape to pop it up around this image that I had colored up with Copic markers. I did a second background in the same way, but this one I cut with a frame die, which made quick work of that step. And this die actually already has the miter lines on it. So instead of cutting the frame apart and putting it back together, I just took a post-it note and lined it up on that angle that I had cut on the other frame before. And I used that post-it note as a mask to just brush ink one way from the corner line. I rotated the panel and repeated that step on each corner so that each corner had a little contrast at that line. And that was a quick way to recreate that mitered look without having to cut the frame apart and all the extra steps in between. I left off the brads on this frame and I left off the extra embossing and inking and I like this look too. So there is another option for a simpler frame. And remember when you cut a frame, you're cutting out that center piece too. So I added some embossing and extra inking to this center piece and used it as a layer on a card. So have fun with this technique and thank you so much for watching. 